Once you've created the first track in an empty project, it'll look something like this. So let's take a look around the interface. What we're looking at here on the left is a track list, and we have one audio track. And an audio track plays back or records live audio that you record either through a microphone or from a guitar or bass plugged into your audio interface. Now, another type of track is a software instrument track that plays back software synthesizers and is triggered via a MIDI keyboard and generates sound based on MIDI input. So let's create one of those. I can get to the new tracks dialog box from this plus button here. And here's what we used before to create this audio track. Now I'm going to click on software instrument and create a software instrument track. Now I have a choice of creating an empty channel strip for the track, or I can call up one of Logic's instruments, or I can open the library from here. I'm going to leave it empty for the moment. So now we have software instrument channel strip, which we use to record, play, and edit MIDI regions, and then an audio track, which we use to record, play, and edit audio regions. Now I'm going to hit this button up here, this icon, and open the library. And this allows us to load in patches or presets or sounds, however you want to think of them. We can open and close it with that button or the letter Y. And as you saw in the new tracks dialog box, we can open it directly from in there. So this will update right now. It's showing me settings for an audio track. But if I click here, the selection changes based on the type of track. So let me go to vintage electric piano and I'm going to choose bright suitcase. And now it's loaded in that piano sound. I'm going to close it with that button and I can play on my MIDI keyboard now. And if you don't have a MIDI keyboard controller, you can always go under Window and then Show Musical Typing and then use your QWERTY keyboard. Or you can use this keyboard. And it can be resized and you can change the range of it. We'll explore all that later in more detail. So the idea is that this hosts and plays and records MIDI regions and this audio regions. Now here we have the I button, which is for the inspector. And this will open and close a panel, which allows us to control settings based on either track or region selection. So we open and close it with this or the letter I. Now the top part allows us to adjust parameters for whatever region is selected, either MIDI region or audio region. And the bottom part allows us to adjust track and channel strip parameters. So right now this audio track is playing through this channel strip and we can adjust various settings here. And here, the bright suitcase instrument that we loaded is playing through this instrument channel strip, and it's got the instrument plug in there and some other plugins for processing the sound. And we'll explore all this in more detail later in the series, but some sends for effects. So again, this bottom part is for the track and channel strip, and this is the software instrument channel strip, and this is an audio channel strip, and the top is for the selected region. Now here we have some help. Wherever I hover the mouse open, this new field opens up in the inspector and we can get a little description of each area of the interface as we hover our mouse over it. And if the inspector is closed, you can still click this and it'll open a little standalone window, which again, you can use to hover the mouse over and look and get a description of what's going on. I'm going to leave it off for now. Next is a button for smart controls and B will open or close that and it'll update based on what track is selected. And it gives you controls to quickly adjust the sound of the track. And this one's empty because there's nothing on that track yet or channel strip yet. I'm gonna hit B to close it. Now, next we have the mixer with this icon and X will open and close that. And we can use this button for a little bit of a wider view. And here we'll see this audio channel strip. And here's the bright suitcase instrument and a couple of other channel strips that were created automatically when we called up this patch. And again, we'll explore that later in the videos. But this is automatically generated based on what's in the tracks area. I'm going to hit X to close it. Now, here we have some different editors that we get to with this icon or the letter E. When we're on an audio track, it'll open up an audio track editor or a smart tempo editor. And when we're on a software instrument track, it'll open up a choice of either a piano roll editor for graphic editing of MIDI notes, score editor, where we can edit musical notation, and Step Sequencer, which is a way to create regions here based on inputting steps in this grid. And we have the Smart Tempo Editor, and E will close that up. I'm going to end off here. I don't want to overload you with too much in one video. So here's a quick review. 
Audio regions are record, edited, and played on audio tracks, and MIDI regions or step sequencer regions are recorded and edited and played on software instrument tracks. And both of these types of tracks play back through channel strips that we can access either in the inspector or the mixer window. Patches or sounds are loaded from the library, and the inspector is divided into two parts. The top part of the inspector is used to adjust parameters for whatever regions are selected, and the bottom part is used to adjust different aspects of the tracks and channel strips that are selected. We have the smart controls panel, which is used to quickly adjust the sound of a track. And we have two types of editors. MIDI editors are used to edit the contents of MIDI regions. And then we have an audio track editor to edit audio regions. We'll see you for more in the next video.